you can hear my voice, it means things are good. It means that you will see me soon. <laughs> Hopefully. I am just checking. Oh, it looks like you'll be able to see everything. Fantastic. Okay. Hello. How is everyone today, this Thursday afternoon? I am logging into my laptop so that I'll be able to see your comments. All right. Welcome back to Cola Vida Cooking Live. Today, we have a wild card recipe for you. Are you excited? I am. Um, I wonder if any of you guessed what it will be or what it was what it's going to be. We will post the recipe on Facebook in the, um, in the comments so you can see that and follow along. But today I am bringing you more fried things. Yay! <laughs> I'm bringing you fried calamari. <laughs> now, I happen to love fried calamari. I often order it in Italian restaurants when I go out to eat a little antipasto, fried calamari, you share it with the table. It's really nice. I've seen it done in many different ways. Um, it's a very adaptable recipe, which I'll talk about soon. Um, and you can kind of accentuate it with different, maybe different flavors you might like. We're gonna keep it traditional, but I'm gonna talk about one little addition we'll make and then we can talk about some other ideas too. So, Feel free to, <laughs> you just had calamari a couple days ago, looking forward to making my own. It's so easy, Deborah. that's what I'm going to show you. <laughs> no, no, Mary Eileen, it's super easy. This is fried calamari. So, now let's talk about calamari a little bit. Some people, uh, I mean, when you get it, you know, it looks like these beautiful little fried rings and, you know doesn't look like much. Sometimes you get the little tentacle pieces. I actually love those. I know some people don't go nuts for them, but I will fish them out of the pile and save them for myself. I'm greedy like that. Yes, I am. But we're doing just rings today because I went looking for calamari and I found it frozen in the freezer section, freezer seafood section of my grocery store. And it's already chopped up into rings for me. So you can buy it sometimes fresh from your fishmonger, you know, depending on how they stock these things. Um, you may have to clean it. They'll probably clean it for you. You can ask nicely and they'll probably do it for you. I've also gotten it frozen whole and just thawed it and chopped it up myself. It's pretty easy to do. If you're at all squeamish about uh, slimy fish things, yeah, I mean, it's not so bad. It's really just like, it's pretty simple and straightforward. It's the easiest segue into, you know, chopping up fish and getting it ready to cook that I can think of, to be honest. So I'm gonna show you what we got. And if you got it all pre-chopped, you really don't have to do much. So um, Jose on Instagram says, I love Colavita. Thank you, Jose. We really appreciate that. <laughs> oh my goodness says, I use colavita oil to prepare baby food. That's awesome. That's so exciting. Only olive oil I buy. It, it's true. And we are going to be frying in extra virgin olive oil today. So I'm going to turn on my stove top here. And I'm going to pour in, I have this sturdy little pot here. I don't want to get it too hot. This thing is very powerful. So I have my sturdy pot. These Dutch ovens are great for frying because they're pretty much indestructible. So I really like this. And we are going to be frying in Colavita extra virgin olive oil, our premium Italian. And I'm going to add about a cup to this um, Dutch oven here. So sometimes what I do is I take this little pourry thing off when I need to pour out a lot of olive oil. It really helps. Okay, we're gonna get that in there. That's about a cup. You don't need a lot because these particular pieces aren't that big. These were small calamari, I guess. And um, so 
you don't really need that much and you're kind of going to flip them around a little bit so no need you know a cup a cup and a half is just fine so we're going to let that get hot about 350 ish degrees um, i'll probably test it with a little bit of flour because i'm not going to use a thermometer i go thermometer list here that's how i roll <laughs> okay so a couple other things so i've got my calamari and what i did it came all pre-cut in a nice freezer bag. So I took it out of the bag and put it in a big bowl and put it in the refrigerator overnight. And when I woke up the next morning, it was all thawed. Yay! So that is really easy. But then what I did is I actually put it in a colander and rinsed it in cold water. So that is um, just to get all that old ice off it, you know, rinse it clean. And then I patted it with paper towels so it's really dry now. Um, it's still moist, you know, but I don't want all that extra water hanging out on it. Not a good plan. Now, if you're in a hurry, you can also put the calamari in a bowl, douse it with ice water, and just keep running the ice water on it for about a half an hour, 20 minutes, and it will thaw. Not hot water, cold water. I know it sounds weird, but it works. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to season it with salt and pepper, very important. So I have my freshly ground pepper that I'm going to give a little shake to. Okay. And then I have my salt. These are very tiny pieces. So, you know, using a light hand with the salt is all is fine. You can always put a little like Maldon sea salt or something. Um, on top afterwards so you can get some nice sea salt flakes on the fried calamari which can be really nice so now they are all seasoned and salt and peppered etc then the only other thing i have is regular old flour i'm probably not even going to use this much can you guys see this bowl of flour here so in the past when i've fried things it's been an, an unruly mess um, as it should i wouldn't have it any other way <laughs> um but this time you know in previous times i usually do flour then egg then breadcrumb but this just flour and because the calamari is pretty moist that flour is going to stick to it it's going to be a really light breading um so it's it's not very it's not very intense you want it to be really light because the calamari itself is really light so you don't want to overpower that and then we're going to dip it in the oil and it's going to fry in about two minutes. It goes so fast and you kind of want to flip it around a little bit so that, um, you know, make sure that both sides get evenly coated. But this stuff takes literally no time to cook. So this is an appetizer you can throw together, you know, at the drop of a hat and have really fun. It's great for football games if you're or any kind of movie night movies more than sports right now but you know i mean this is the kind of stuff that's fun to have at a party or for yourself for a special dinner um so let's see how hot we are over here okay we're gonna give this i hear crackling but i'm not sure if that's me stepping on something or what a little more time okay so while this is heating up a little bit more i'm going to talk about some of the other instruments i have to help us fry the best way. So I have a baking sheet lined with a paper towel. I have a slotted spoon, sort of, this is like a salad server to be honest with you, but it works. <laughs> Basically I want to scoop these out and put them on here and then the paper towel will absorb that oil so it doesn't, you know, nothing gets all soggy. So that is essential. I've got a little fork to help me flip the calamari around in my flour and that is it for now until we talk about what to serve it with. So I've only got a few here, so we should be able to do this pretty quickly. I think that's getting hot. So basically I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to take our little calamari and here's a good example. So we've got this little ring here and we're going to dip it in and you want to make sure you're just tossing it around in there. But since it's a ring, you know, you've got an inside and an outside to coat. So you want to make sure you're mindful of getting both sides. Pretty important stuff. Okay, so I am going to get all of these coated in flour. Pepperoncini, yes, 
I'm going to talk about that actually. The pepperoncinis have given me um, a little bit of a problem today. <laughs> so I got this whole jar of pepperoncinis here. Um, and I thought, oh, these will be so fun. And maybe I can even, you know, plop them in the flour and fry them up too, because why not? I mean, have you guys ever had fried pickles? I feel like it's kind of similar. I love fried pickles. Um, but I cannot open that jar. I've been trying all day, all day. I've tried everything. I've tried tapping the cap onto the edge of the table, running it under hot water. I've tried numerous things and I have to tell you, I'm not, um, I'm pretty strong. I've got a good grip. I can't get that thing to open. <laughs> so <laughs> instead of throwing it against the wall, which would be dangerous for so many reasons, I'm just going to acknowledge that yes, pepperoncinis would be a great addition to this dish. And I wish I could have some, <laughs> my, my. So another thing you can do is just, you know, add a bunch of these all at once. They're very small, so you don't want to lose them, but we can just dump them in the flour. And this is what the fork is helpful for. Flip them around a bit. And then you just got to make sure you can find them and fish them out again. Da, da, da. I think they're in here. Yay. They are. So the freezer bag of, uh, calamari actually gives you quite a few, um, which is nice because I pre-fried some of these because you would have been tragically bored watching me fry the whole bag. So I pre-fried some of them this morning. You know, I wanted to make sure this would all work for you guys. It's tragic if it wouldn't. Um, I've never made my own calamari before, my own fried calamari. It always seemed like one of those restaurant things that, you know, I didn't do on my own. Well, you know, I think some of us might be missing some of those restaurant things that we used to have, you know. And so I thought it would be nice to have one of those signature restaurant dishes that you might be missing from your favorite place since you can't really go to them now. And to be able to create it for yourself and your family. Um, so I, I don't know, Friday night, movie night, seems like every night is movie night. But Friday night movie night, make some fried calamari. Why not? <laughs> now we can talk about, you know, how to, uh, how you would serve this and then also what you would serve it with. So very exciting stuff. Okay. Let's check the comments. I did, <laughs> Shelly, I did just put a bunch in there at one time. I was being careful in the beginning, but you really don't need to. And then fishing them out again. Okay. I think we have them all. I just want to make sure I didn't lose any of them in the pile. Ha, I found one. Okay. One more. They're hiding. Okay. I might recommend a more shallow bowl than this one for, um, so you don't lose your calamari. Okay. This one needs a little more. So now we have them all coated in flour and then I'm just going to do a little guy just to test. Put him in there. Yeah, he's good. Okay. All right. Perfect. And we're going to let these cook for two minutes. I don't think I'm going to put them all in at the same time. I don't like to add too much at once. So I think I'm going to do like two batches, but you know, I like to give them room to breathe. Take my slotted spoon, give them a stir. They're already crisping up really, really beautifully. So that's going pretty well. Yeah. I'm going to wait. I'm going to do this in the second pass and let these guys finish up. Because then if I add these in halfway, then I've lost track of how much time those guys are in there. I like to keep it all on the up and up. I also will need to grab a paper towel. Okay, let's see. Take a butter knife and whack around the edge of the lint. To open. I didn't try that one, Deborah. I will give that a try. <laughs> I will give that a try. It's just plain flour, yes. So Barty, I use just plain flour because I'm demonstrating the simplest way 
to do this. I did season them with salt and pepper beforehand. However, what you could do as an option to your flour, I mean, so many options, right? We could, I mean, we could go crazy here. We could add in some Cajun seasonings or at least a little hot pepper. Um, we could do some za'atar or something like that. There's so many different things that you could add in if you felt like it. So um, this is the simplest way, but adding other seasonings is a great idea. And um, yeah, so I would do a spicy one, maybe Cajun. You can do Old Bay. I mean, why not, right? <laughs> it's seafood. I feel like that works. Okay. We are gonna get a back of a knife or something in just a few and test that out. Let's see. What other comments do we have? I think that's it. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and fish these out. Ha ha, fish them out, no pun intended. Here we go. Look at these little beauties. Golden brown and super crispy. And then I am gonna add the rest of them. All right, so let's get the rest of them in there and then I will talk about our next, our next step of serving. So yes, you could season this flour with whatever you'd like, uh, seasoning wise, spice wise. You could do a little dried oregano too, that would be great. Put these guys in there. I thought those needed a little extra flour. Dump them in. Ooh, I love that noise. Okay, two minutes. I'm gonna keep track. I'm gonna give them a little stir just to free them up. And just so you know, um, as you do this, the olive oil is gonna get a little cloudy. That's because the, you're adding the flour to it, so it's gonna get a little cloudy. It's not a problem. It's not going to affect your frying. I just wouldn't reuse this oil for anything because um, it's going to be pretty, pretty cloudy with flour. So just an FYI there. Okay, now for serving, so a couple of things that I love to do. So I have, let me get out my little demo plate. Oh, look at this. I made this for you guys. I wish you could share it with me. How much oil? Um, so, how much oil? So what I did was um, I used about a cup and a half, maybe less, maybe about a cup and a quarter of olive oil in the Dutch oven. That's it. I mean, it's not like you're frying a really big thing. It's not a meatball or a rice ball. You guys remember the rice balls? Mm-hmm. So you really don't need that much. And they are like literally floating in that much oil. So it's perfect. Okay, so this is my plate that I've assembled. So I fried all of these earlier and they are super crispy. I can see little air bubbles around here. It's really nice. So I've got my lemon wedges. I love to put a little lemon squeeze on my fried calamari. I like that brightness a lot. I think it's really fun. Um, and then I have Colavita crushed tomatoes. The other thing you could do is a spicy marinara sauce. So you could add some of the Colavita hot peppers, two crushed tomatoes, and maybe saute that with a little garlic, and it makes a really nice, quick, spicy sauce. I love that plan. These guys are done. Let me fish them out. So you could go spicy marinara, regular marinara, I mean, you know, I've seen people do like ranch dressings. We actually, on our website, if you search colavitarecipes.com for sauces, we have a healthy ranch that's made with Greek yogurt and our white balsamic vinegar that actually I wouldn't be opposed to having with these little ones. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. We're good. I'm gonna add them to the pile here. So that kind of thing could happen. Um, you could also do like a vodka sauce. Um, that would be really great for dipping. Look at this. This makes a lot. They're like little popcorns. Okay. So another Colavita product that I have that I thought would be really nice here 
So I've seen these in you know various different ways, and I have our Colavita balsamic glaze, which I love. I love this for salads. I love this for a lot of things. Um, and I think like a little drizzle on the fried calamari would be really nice. So let's see. Oh yeah, just like that. And, you know, maybe keep the bottle on hand so you have it in case you want to reapply. Sometimes the ones underneath don't get as much, you know. So that's what I would say. And the balsamic glaze has that tang from balsamic vinegar, but it's also a little bit sweet. It's a little bit sweet because balsamic glaze is a reduction of balsamic vinegar. So this is like a really like impactful flavor, which I think will be really nice with this. Just a little bit. So those are my suggestions there. Love this with aioli. That's a great idea, Barty. I love that idea. I'm too far, I know. Well, maybe I can come up. <laughs> Question from IG, which olive oil? Oh, okay. Which olive oil? So I have used the um, Cola Vita Premium Italian Extra Virgin Olive Oil. Uh, this is our Italian only olive olive oil. So it's a really, it's a bolder, it's a peppery flavor, which I really like. Um, so I think some of that flavor transfers to the fish and I kind of like that for fried things. Um, you could use any extra virgin olive oil of Cola Vita's. We have many different flavor pro profiles. Our premium selection would be our most balanced. Um, our Californian would be the lightest in flavor. So you can make that call based on how you want to taste your food. But I went with the big guns today, so I wanted the strong flavor. So let's see, we've got our marinara sauce, we've got our fried calamari, we've got our lemons, and that is all we need. Now what would we have this with? So typically this would be like an appetizer course, right? So you might have a little cocktail and then like an um, Aperol spritz be enjoying your fried calamari and then be anticipating your main meal after. So for me, you know, since it's grilling season, I'm thinking a lot about grilling right now. I hope you guys enjoyed my backyard on Tuesday for the grilled, the grilled skirt steak. I ate the rest of it today for lunch. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think it would be great with some grilled steaks um, or some grilled chicken. Or if you want to follow it up with fish, that's great. You know, if you want to go super traditional, you can follow it up with the spaghetti and clams. Um, that would be really nice too, and a really big salad. So those would be my recommendations. And speaking of grilling, um, if I didn't remind you earlier, on colavita.com we have a whole section right now dedicated to marinades. So if you go check that out, we can pop the link in um, in the Facebook chat right here, but the marinades have, you know, all different kinds of marinades from fish to meat to non-meats, all the stuff you would need. And so have fun with that. We also have for Father's Day, which is getting close, <laughs> um, we have a whole collection of burger recipes. So your traditional hamburger, with, of course, our Cola Vita inspired modifications and a salmon burger, a veggie burger made with beets, and a portobello mushroom burger. So those are all up there too to help you through your grilling Father's Day marinating needs. And this is our fried calamari. Wasn't that easy? I mean, it's like we're done in record time. I love it. So honestly, it didn't take me long to fry the rest of the calamari. I just wanted to be sure I wasn't boring you with a lot of sizzling and stuff. You can get the idea. So that is all we've got. Um, if you don't follow us already, please like our page on Facebook or follow us on Instagram at Colavita USA. And stay tuned for our poll because we'll be asking you what I should be cooking next week where I hope you'll join us. Um, also, head over to colavita.com and sign up for our newsletter. I think you'll like it. We have recaps of all of our cooking shows that we've been doing, plus the recipes, any other news and promotions we've got going on. So it's a great way to keep yourself in the loop. And let's see, it's linked in the description. Yes, the recipe is linked in the description of this post. So please go check that out. Also, for Instagram people, hi Instagram. 
Now all of these recipes are being saved to an IGTV uh, collection or series. And so if you miss one on Instagram, you can head over there and watch it again so they don't disappear. How cool is that? I like it. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining. Um, if I did not see your comment, I'm going to circle back and check them. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to write them in Facebook and I will do my best to answer. Um, yes. So thank you so much and I will be seeing you on Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll meet you back here. All right. Thanks so much. Ciao for now.